Hello everyone, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have five cards to share created with the Spellbinders October 2021 Card Kit of the Month. I don't typically share card kit videos on my channel because most of the time I prefer to use my stamps and my dies to make my cards and I'm not really big on using pattern paper. But this particular kit from Spellbinders had me feeling very inspired and after I had finished making the card and video that I usually make every month for Spellbinders, I kept on playing with the kit supplies and I made four additional cards. The fifth card and video tutorial can be found on the Spellbinders YouTube channel and I have a link to that video in my description below. What I loved most about this card kit is the die set. So here's a look at the three main dies in this kit. There are other dies included, but I really wanted to show you these three as they, I feel, are the key. So you have an outer rim die. This is a very pretty label shape. Next you have this detailed insert and it adds beautiful dot cutout detail to the label. Now it doesn't cut out the label itself, just the detail on the outer edge. And you can use this die on its own. You can cut into the paper. And then the third die is another insert with a dot and stars background. But this last one does have a cut line on the edge, so it will cut the shape out. You can mix and match these three dies to create various cutouts. And this is what I love the most. So this is what the main label looks like. It's a very pretty label shape. Classic, simple, elegant, great to create focal point for any card. And you can cut it from white or colored cardstock, or you can cut it from pattern paper. This is the one I cut out using pattern paper from the kit. Now, if you add an insert to your frame or to your label, you will get a die cut that looks like this. So not just a pretty label, but a label with added detail around the edges. So this takes it to the next level and looks very elegant. Next, if you add the third insert, you'll end up with two die cuts, a frame die cut and a starry night die cut. Again, both very pretty. While the starry night is not something you could use on every card, the frame and the main label shape certainly are evergreen and versatile. Again, you can cut the insert from various colors of cardstock for different looks and then layer on white or a colored label. Now, if you use just these two dies, you can create a frame with no detail. So here's a close up. And again, you can cut it from various colors of cardstock and you can use just the frame. The frame can be layered over the main label shape to add interest. And by the way, the label can be used vertically and horizontally. But again, the frame can also be used on its own. So this is a neat little die set that gives you a lot of creative options. I had a great time playing with these dies and the other supplies from the kit and creating my cards. Now here's a label where I added a floral sticker to the paper prior to die cutting it. So it looks as if the flower is sort of stamped directly onto the label. I added a double layer of foam squares to the back and foam mounted this onto an A2 card base, which I had previously covered with pattern paper from my kit. I also foam mounted a pre-printed unicorn die cut. I added Born to be Magical sticker. I previously adhered this sticker onto white cardstock to add stability, and then I just cut it out and used glue to adhere it onto the card. Now, one of the other dies included in this kit is a die to cut little stars. You have three sizes of the stars. I cut a bunch already from gold mirror cardstock. That cardstock is also included in this kit, and I foam mounted the stars scattering them diagonally. Now this card looks a little bit cluttered because of the busy pattern paper, but in the end, it turned out quite nice. Another die included in this kit is one to spell shine on. Here, I die cut it from gold mirror cardstock. I added double-sided adhesive to the back of that paper. I had to use the adhesive from my stash. Everything else comes from the kit. So I added adhesive to the back of the paper before cutting it. So once it was die cut, it was made into a sticker, making it very easy to adhere these letters onto the card. And here's a look at this card once finished. It's the only landscape one that I have for you today. All of the rest are portrait cards. And I love the way this one turned out. 
For my next card, I decked a label from Pretty Floral Pattern Paper. This is the same paper that I used for the background for my previous card. By the way, you get two sheets of each pattern paper in your paper pad in this kit and all other Spellbinders card kits. The paper pad is six by six inches, so there is plenty to make a bunch of cards. Now, this paper is rather thin. It is paper, not cardstock. So I like to back it up with another cardstock layer. This just adds a little bit more stability. I used my Barely Art Glue and adhered these two labels together. I also added a white frame to this die kit and I love that I have this option with this kit. Now, all of my cards feature quite a similar layout. So I have a sheet of pattern paper covering the front of my card. Next, I have a pretty label popped up on top, either in the center of the card or a little bit closer to the top, leaving some room at the bottom for a sentiment. The label works as the focal point and it typically houses a sentiment. You get so many different embellishments in this kit. You have various stickers. You have both simple cardstock stickers and epoxy stickers. There are pre-printed die cuts and there are actually two of each die cut, including both image die cuts and sentiment die cuts and even a sheet with gold foil sentiment stickers. So quite a lot of pieces. Spellbinders advertises these kits as kits to create at least 10 cards and you really do get a lot of pieces to easily make 10 or even 20 projects. You also have 10 card bases included in this kit and 10 envelopes along with colored cardstock. And by the way, if you'd like to see an unboxing video for this card kit, you can watch it on the Spellbinders YouTube channel. So here's a look at my second card. Again, I scattered some die cut in pre-printed stars going diagonally on my card following the diagonal line pattern on the background. For my next card, I used a sheet with foiled stars as a background and foam mounted a floral label on top. Now I did place it a little bit towards the top, leaving space at the bottom for a sentiment. Next, I added another sentiment in the center of my label and I embellished it with some florals, both using flowers from the sticker sheet and pre-printed floral die cuts. I did use a lot of foam adhesive. These were foam adhesive squares from my stash as I like to add a lot of dimension to my projects. I feel that that really adds life to these cards. Now the Spellbinders card kits are available as a part of monthly club subscription only. So you need to be a club member to get this kit. But what is great about the Spellbinders Club is that there is no minimum commitment, no commitment at all. So you can join and cancel anytime. So if you wanted to get just this one kit and not stay subscribed for the next month, you could. Although I will tell you that Spellbinders kits are quite fantastic and I've always been a fan. Sadly, I don't have the time to share inspiration with these kits on my YouTube channel. I should say I rarely have the time to share the inspiration here, but I do try whenever I feel really inspired to create something and share with you guys. Now, I do create a lot of projects and videos that you see on the Spellbinders website and YouTube channel, and I get to work with nearly every one of their kits. And I will say that they are very well designed and they are a treat to work with. So here's a look at this card once finished. I love the way it turned out. For my next project, I decided I would use that a Starry Night insert and so I created a little nighttime sky scene. I foam mounted the insert over a gold die cut label and I added a white detail frame. Next, I layered a gold moon pre-printed die cut. I added some pre-printed clouds and foam mounted gold die cut stars. I also added some epoxy stickers to make this scene. You have a lot of zodiac stickers, both epoxy and regular with all of the zodiac signs. So pretty cool if you're into that sort of thing. I also wanted to include a little bit of my creative process in this video, as I obviously don't show you the entire process from start to finish. Had I shown everything, this video would have been several hours long. So I have already picked pattern paper for this card, but I wasn't entirely sure, so I thought I would flip through the paper pad and see if any other pattern would be a better fit for this focal piece. And this was my process for all five cards that I'm sharing today. So I first created a label, I then used it to pick out the best pattern paper to go along with that label. Once I had done that, I added my embellishments, the sentiments, and so on. 
So here's a look at this card with the night time sky. Again, I love the way it turned out. And this is the fifth card I have for you, created with the October 2021 card kit from Spellbinders. Now you can watch a video tutorial for this card on the Spellbinders YouTube channel. I have a link to the club subscriptions page in my video description below. The card kit is $38.50 and US shipping is included in the cost. Now, Spellbinders does ship their kits internationally to select locations, and shipping cost varies based on your destination, based on your location. So you can look that up online on their website. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm so thankful you've joined me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!